welcome to Lifestyle Solopreneur, the community for entrepreneurs who put lifestyle first. Join your host, Flavia Barris, as she interviews successful lifestyle solopreneurs and shares ideas to help you find the perfect balance between lifestyle, business, and self. Flavia is an attorney, marketing expert, and founder of several online academies. She's been featured in major media, including BBC World News, The Wall Street Journal, The New York Post, ESPN Television, and more. Join us for this episode of Lifestyle Solopreneur. Hey, Lifestyle Solopreneurs. Today, we get to speak with Joe Sullivan. He is the founder of Hawk-Eyed Legacy. He's a husband, father, believer, coach, and entrepreneur who is passionate about helping others and changing communities for the better. He spent 12 years in operations for a facility services company and then recently transitioned to become a full-time multifamily real estate investor. Joe brings years of experience working with Fortune 500 companies into his real estate investing career. In 2018, he started investing in duplexes in Kansas City and then made the leap into multifamily apartment investing. He's a member of MIH Mastermind and GoBundance, which have helped him to push himself to scale his business to over 1,400 units owned and self-managed in the Midwest. He's a multifamily coach for the Jake and Gino community, which is where he started his multifamily education. He is so passionate about giving back to the community and that helped him get his start in multifamily investing. So he gives back. His why is to leave a legacy for generations to come and to provide freedom for his family. He resides in Kansas City with his wife, Tanya, and their four daughters. Welcome to the show, Joe. Thank you. Thank you for the introduction. Excited to be here. So good to have you because you are all about figuring out how to have a better lifestyle while making a great income. And a lot of what we talk about on this show is how to do just that. There are people who tune in because we want to hear about all the different career options and ways we can be entrepreneurs out there. And there's countless. We also tune in because we want to hear inspiring and motivating stories and also get ideas on ways to sort of prevent workaholism and to keep some hobbies and family and time for self-care in our schedules, which is so hard to do as an entrepreneur. And you are someone that can speak to all of that. So tell us a little bit about your journey and how you ended up where you are now. Yeah, that's right. I, I, it really resonates with me. Uh, you, as you mentioned, I live in Kansas City, uh, married with four daughters. My real estate journey really actually backtracking. I had the same, out of school, I had the same uh, W-2 job for 12 years. And that's really what uh, pushed me to, to jump into real estate. Uh, really felt trapped and just, you know, didn't, didn't have freedom. And, and it was kind of actually got to a point of uh, almost scary because my, uh, my fate was in somebody else's hands, probably midway through my career. As you mentioned, uh, I started to invest in real estate in Kansas City. It started small with like duplexes and single family homes, really just to get some like, you know, like a side hustle, um, you know, to have some other alternative sources of income. And uh, over, you know, the course of a couple of years, was able to scale on my own with another partner and um, really just decided and was determined that uh, I was going to continue to do that and continue to add, you know, additional passive income. And uh, moved into, um, we tried to move into larger multifamily, did a lot of, uh, well, frankly, over-educating on, uh, through podcasts and books and watching YouTube videos. It's amazing how much you know, free content you could find out there. But decided I, I ultimately needed to, uh, to get into you know, a networking group and then hire a coach. So um, did a lot of research, joined a community, uh, invested at the time significant amount of money for me and actually end up having to uh, put it on a credit card at that time, which is a little scary. My, my entire family thought I was insane. <laughs> I remember that very vividly and got in the right room with the right people. I had a co- actually a couple of coaches and uh, was able to acquire my first large multifamily property with a few partners. And then once I had that first deal, it was really kind of, um, there's another person in the multifamily space that calls it the law, the first deal. And then once you had that first deal, the next one came a few months later, and then there was kind of a trend. Um, and, and it's really, 
it really started off with some side income. But then as I started to see you know, the fruits of the labor, so to speak, really put my head down and decided that it was going to be, I was going to make it happen to where uh, real estate replaced my, uh, my W-2 income. So for a year or two, uh, probably closer to two years, worked nights and weekends, mo- early mornings on real estate, and uh, really a long, long, hard grind till I was pr- pretty close to um, replacing my income so I could have freedom to, to spend more time with my family. My W-2, I, had, I traveled a lot. It was just kind of a slave to, to somebody else. And, um, and, you know, fast forward now, I'm, I'm able to, uh, to do that. You know, I, I was able to accomplish that and I have the freedom to, to kind of, kind of I still work hard, but work where I want to and when I want to and with who I want to. And that's key. But for you, you did that. You said you were in the middle of your career, working as an employee, working for a company. And I think when someone is already to the middle of their career, it's almost harder to jump ship and to do something entrepreneurial or on your own or riskier. And I'm putting that in quotes, because at that point, you've been in your line of work long enough, you've established a career, people sort of expect you to stay put or at least to stick to that line of business. You're kind of looking forward to someday retiring and that horizon's no longer way, way off in the distance. You're like halfway there in your working life. So I think for someone in that stage, it's almost scarier to risk doing something different. And uh, But you did it in a way where you kept your, your full-time job and you had this sort of side hustle at the beginning. Do you recommend that people do that to avoid that scary feeling or jumping off the cliff and, you know, trying to build the parachute on the way down versus the alternatives? I know there's other people who are like, you know what, you got to go cold turkey because until you feel that obligation of rent coming due or mortgage coming due, or you have to provide for a family or for yourself and car payments, everything that you'll never be as push yourself as hard. You obviously push yourself very hard, even while you had a full-time job. But what do you think out there? I'm sure people come to you for advice and they, they may be unhappy where they are in a full-time job, maybe corporate grind or wherever they might be. And they say to you, hey, do I jump ship and, and do something like what you're doing? And do I go in you know, full-time with all my time? Or is it better to dip your toe and do things slowly and more gradually until you can build up that side income? Yeah, for me, it was more out of necessity because I just didn't, I wasn't capitalized well enough to, you know, to make it more than maybe a year. I did this with four kids, so I had a lot of mouths to feed, still do, but um, I think, I think it's, uh, you know, each person, it's individually. We did finally leave the W-2. You know, I wasn't able to completely replace my income. So there was quite a bit of betting on myself, I guess, for, for lack of better terms. And I, I am a big proponent of that. Like we did a, my wife and I did a really, it was a lot of uh, lot of long discussions, praying, and we you know we did some analysis, and ultimately we just we did kind of a what's you know worst case scenario, and um, landed on the worst case scenario was essentially was uh, selling the house and moving into a family, and you know that's that's not too so bad because there's a lot of people who have it worse than that, so so that's that's kind of what the final reasoning was, and then also uh, like I mentioned before I was gonna if I'm gonna bet on anybody I'm gonna bet on myself. And I didn't want to regret not doing this or, you know, or not trying. I didn't want to wake up someday and be like, man, I wish I would have, I wish I would have tried to do, do more, not only for myself, but for my, uh, my kids. I don't want them to, to ask me one day, why didn't you, you know, why didn't you try that dad? So that was the thought process. I think if you're in a different circumstance, for example, if you were single and you had a, I didn't have a family to feed, things like that, I think it'd be a lot easier to, to you know, burn the boats as, as a lot of people call it. But in my situation, I didn't really have much of a choice. And it's real estate can be demanding. Being a real estate investor is not always a two hour a day job. A lot of times it's very demanding. So how do you maintain your sanity and white space in your calendar for the things that matter to you? And what advice would you have for somebody that's struggling to do that? Yeah, this is a really good question. And candidly, I don't don't think I do well at it. But what I try to do very hard is I religiously time block we have a shared calendar with my wife and I have a shared calendar and I, I time block. So I know what's going on with kids events. And, uh, and, uh, frankly, I get, you know, I, I get up early. So for me, it's like, if it's on the, it's on the calendar for 30 minutes that I'm going to journal, for example, you know, as small as that may seem like I'm going to be journaling for those 30 minutes. So we respect each other's time in that regard. 
but yeah, I, I could, I, I'm constantly fighting and trying to figure out how to be better at that because your, your day can get blown up really quick in real estate. Like you can, you can lose a whole day. So I, I try to respect, respect the calendar and uh, ask others and, and, and try really hard not to, not to make exceptions. And what's yeah. next for you? Where do you go from here? You've built Hawkeye Legacy. You have now achieved tremendous success in real estate. What is next on your roadmap? Uh, I'm going to be, I've, I've had uh, several partners who are going to be kind of pivoting and, and doing more deals, um, not without partners, but just um, uh, more deals on our own leading, like the, they're called um, the lead sponsor on deals and really trying to continue to systematize and delegate. And then eventually we'll be, uh, you know, hiring more, more people to help me buy back some of my time because I, I do value being able to go to my kids, uh, you know, athletic and school events and things like that. So figuring out better ways to, uh, to delegate and uh, have even more freedom. And for anyone listening that doesn't have kids yet, but is planning to, whatever you estimate the amount of time that you will need to spend or that you'll want to spend with your kids on their sports and hobbies and pastimes, you should triple that because it's going to be three times what you imagine it will be parenting is really is uh parents are creating a life for their kids and so you have your own hobbies you have their hobbies and you've got to make it all work what are the things that you do for fun joe uh not necessarily just that you do with the family because i know you're such a family guy and you are you're there for your kids you want to watch them do their sports you want to be there for their achievements and you know school ceremonies and the whole thing but what do you do just for you for fun yeah, it's a good question. I, I we like to travel. My wife and I like to travel. We like to be outdoors, so we like to go boating or and fishing. And that's really. And then it's sports. I love watching sports: college basketball, college football, and NFL. So I'm a Kansas City. I'm a huge Chiefs fan, so I love to watch the Chiefs. Try to go to Chiefs games. But yeah, most of my time is consumed with whatever the kids <laughs> kids have going on. So trying to time block a a weekend for myself. Uh, those things are important. So w- I don't want to pitch necessarily the mastermind you've joined or the ones you've been a part of. But tell us a little bit about what is a mastermind? Because you mentioned that it, as something that was very instrumental in getting you to where you are. So let's talk about what is a mastermind in general? And then what do you get out of participating in a mastermind? How does that help you as a real estate investor? So masterminds, um, you know, I, when I first kind of heard of them, it was kind of a, a, you know, I was like, kind of big eye roll, like, what is, what is that? But <laughs> But now in hindsight, uh, they've really changed and shaped my, frankly, my personal life and my, my business. So, you know, just getting in the room with a group of like-minded individuals. I'm in one for the multifamily real estate specifically for investors. Uh, I'm in another one for just like business owners and talks more about like lifestyle and how to be a good, a good father, a good husband, or those types of things. So it's like a whole life thing. But what they do for me is I get, I, you know, I get, you get in the room and you get to see people that are doing things differently, some cases better, some cases worse, but just differently. And, uh, and it's also very motivating to see when people are accomplishing large things. So it really pushes you. And then, uh, and then accountability, that's, that's the other big thing. Most of them, one of them meets monthly, the other one meets weekly. And, um, the, the people I'm in the group with, a small group, they, they hold me accountable, like extremely extreme accountability. Um, so it's as small as I say, I'm going to, I'm going to run three miles this week and I get on the, get on my weekly call and I, I have to kind of I'm put out to the, the wolves, so to speak. And uh, if I didn't run my three miles, I have to, uh, you know, there's some, some type of, uh, somebody will say, well, you, you're pun- Joe, your goal was to run three miles. So next week you have to run six. So, you know, that's just holding each other accountable and then, uh, and then motivate, you know, the motivation thing. So those are the two big pieces for me. I need to have probably someday a psychologist on this show because I want to explore why is it so hard to be accountable to our own selves? If we're doing something for our families, if we are doing something and we're seen by an accountability group or an accountability buddy, even just one other person, it's so much easier to get things accomplished and done. And I don't know if this is across the board, but it seems to be very, very typical and common, at least among the people I hang out with. So at least among my tribe, right? My people, entrepreneurs that I know, the accountability thing is important because we will do things when we are 
accountable to others that we just won't do for ourselves. Like everyone says, be your own boss, but sometimes we are not the best bosses. We're either not attentive, we're not (laughs) demanding enough of ourselves, we are not performing well for ourselves, you know, as our as the the worker for ourselves as our own boss. And and that part's hard. So I'm glad you found the right mix for you. What do you suggest to somebody if they're like, well, this sounds good. Joe sounds smart. He sounds like what he says makes sense. I should join a mastermind. How do you do that? Are there many out there? Is that something that you have to just ask among friends? Do you recommend they call someone that they know who is a successful person and see if they're in a mastermind or know of some? What advice would you give to someone seeking out that kind of accountability and support? Yeah, I I would advise, depending, it really depends on what profession you're in or what you're looking for. So if there's a lot of masterminds. So I would, if you're seeking some something in multifamily specifically, I would recommend, and I'll just give them a shout out, Jake and Gino community. They're incredible. But if, you know, there's other, if you're seeking uh, you know, how to wholesale, you know, I don't know who that would be, but find a successful wholesaler and ask them, what, you know, what their, what group they're in or what education they've done. So, you know, I, I would just, uh, I would say success leaves clues. I'm sure you guys have heard that, but success leaves clues. So, Find somebody who's successful and and try to add value and um, and then see what they what they've done to get to where they're at. What about tools and software hacks, things that you're using? Is there anything new that you've found that you've started using that you're really enjoying or liking in the world of either tech or just techniques? Yeah, I mean, I've used, I don't know how new it is to your to this audience, but um, I've used Monday.com. It's a, very helpful for me. It's very, it's very visual. I use it for like my, basically uh, uh, different types of to-do lists. You can assign tasks to people through it. It's, you know, tied to your email. So that, that's been, that's been a game changer for me over the last year. Um, I don't, I don't think it's, it's very new. But. Well, great advice. Great inspiration. Joe, talking to you is very motivating. So if somebody wants to learn more about Hawkeye Legacy or what you do, or some of these things you've been talking about, where would they go to connect with you? You can go to my website, uh, joeydts.com, or you can email me at joe at joey. And we'll be sure to put that into the show notes. So we've got joeydts.com, and then email is joe at joeydts.com. Joe, it's been awesome having you on the show. It's great always to chat with someone who is successful. I have a special place in my heart for real estate because I do a lot of that and I'm in heavily into that world. But there's so many different ways out there to make a living. It's never which is the perfect one, which is the exact one that's made for me. It's really about finding oh, something that you enjoy, that you're passionate about, that you can be successful in. And there's so many choices out there in the world. So Joe, thank you for motivating this audience and us and talking to us a little bit about what you do so that we can get excited about potentially someday following in your footsteps. Yeah, I appreciate it. Thank you for the time. Please, if anybody uh, would like to reach out, I'm, I'm, I, lo- I love helping others. So if there's any way I can help somebody, it, uh, it, really, uh, it, it really fills my, uh, my buckets up by, by helping others. Guess what, lifestyle solopreneurs? If you don't yet have an online business earning you enough passive income to live the life of your dreams, I'd like to suggest you consider trying out Kajabi. Kajabi is an all-in-one solution where you can create and teach online courses, publish a paid newsletter, launch a free or paid podcast, process payments, build one-on-one coaching portals for your clients, and much, much more. I personally use Kajabi to power numerous successful and profitable online businesses. Lifestyle solopreneurs, there's a free trial of Kajabi waiting for you at this link, www.kfreetrial.com. You can try Kajabi for free, no obligation, by going to www.kfreetrial.com. Again, kfreetrial.com, and that K stands for Kajabi. Starting an online business helped me break free from that corporate grind, and I hope it does the same for you. You have nothing to lose and absolutely everything to gain. Thanks so much for tuning in today. Don't forget to subscribe to the show and see you next time.